I'm just working. Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, guys, this is Bruce. Welcome to Combo Courses podcast, where we talk about all things GRC, all things com, uh, cybersecurity related. And um, before I get started, you should know I have a book right now out for free. Go to combocourses.net if you're interested in that. It'll be the first link that'll lead you directly to the book. Book's free until until the 9th of this month. I do this on a regular basis and then it'll be discounted after that. I'll do it for about a couple of weeks. And then after that, I'm, I'm looking for reviews. If you're wondering why is this book free? You know, uh, so what I do is I'm a publisher and an author. I coordinate with other cybersecurity professionals, other IT professionals, and we put together we put together different methods of learning this material that you don't typically see um, in the libraries. You don't typically see it uh, in the bookstores. And that's the kind of the audience I'm trying to reach. People who are actually doing this or want to get into this, I write it for you. I'm not writing for academia. I'm not. It's written in, in plain English that you can understand. Um, that's, I think, the appeal of the books that we write. And so this one is written by a group of cybersecurity professionals and it's written uh, for you to understand what is cybersecurity and privacy law and why is it important to cybersecurity? Like, what are the things to focus on if you're getting into this genre, into this space, especially if you're trying to do GRC, especially if you're a big entry level cybersecurity person, an entry level IT per professional. Get the book for free right now. Link is in the description. Link is in uh, combocourses.net. It'll be the first thing you see. Tons of other stuff that's free on there as well. Um, and that's it. Let's get into this. So first of all, I'm going to address some questions that came directly from TikTok just now. Uh, <clears throat> if you're joining this podcast, I've named it No Experience and How to Get Into IT and Cybersecurity. And so I'm going to try to keep the topic on that in the beginning and then we'll just kind of open it up to everybody so jordan asked me having a problem landing a help desk job and i have no technical experience but i have an a plus certification so all right so what this tells me is that you have the knowledge you have some knowledge in information technology which is a great start by the way that's definitely where you want to start because nobody's going to hire you if you don't have basic basic knowledge about information technology which is what's something i always talk about you can get away with no experience but you can't get away with no knowledge at all you have to learn something so it looks like you've taken the first the first good step towards getting in this field where do you go from here it's a tough question and there's a there's so many different methods and ways to get into this field experience is golden experience is 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 king you can't beat it. Um, a certification is not going to beat experience. A degree is not going to beat experience. And to be honest with you, even a master's degree or a PhD will not compete with experience with good experience. So experience is gold. Um, and I wanted to stress that enough. But so the question is, it's like a chicken and the egg kind of thing. Like if you need experience to get in this field, how do you get experience in the first place? Um, it's tricky. There's a couple ways to do it. And I can tell you how I did it, and I'll tell you how some other friends of mine got into it. I did it through the military. And the military is all on the job training, and I did that for about three, four, three, four years in the military where I was hands on doing I, all kinds of IT. Because if you're in the military, at the time I was a 3COX1, which right now I think they're calling a 3 Delta something. I don't know. It's changed. I've been out of the military for a long time, so I don't know. <laughs> But uh, if you in the military right now, you know what I'm talking about. I was a three delta equivalent of a three delta. And then there's if you're in the Navy, they have the equivalent of an IT professional or a cybersecurity professional. If you're in Marine, same thing. If you're in the Army, same thing. I think they call them three Bravos. I, I don't remember. I don't know the, the proper names, so I'm going to avoid <laughs> avoid that. But if you're in the military, they give you proper on the job training to where you can literally get out and get a, a really decent job. Military sets you up for success. If you're doing IT space, they they give you not only on the job training, but sometimes they'll pay for your entire degree. If you if you sign up for it, you could pay. That's what I did. I got my degree on the way out. Um, and I also got a, a few certifications from the military, all 100 percent paid for. And I had a clearance. 
a security clearance, which you don't need a security clearance to get an IT job. But I had all those things. It's all, all set up. And when I got out, man, I was set up. Now, let's say you're not in the military. You're not going to do the military for whatever your own reasons. Right. And I don't blame you. It's not for everybody. That's for sure. How do you do it? Like, let's say the next best thing I would say would be some kind of school. Because a degree still means something. I know people are want to talk shit about degrees. You want to talk shit about vocational schools or whatever. But let me tell you something. A degree is very valuable. In, in If you're doing any technical work, any kind of engineering work, any kind of scientific work, a degree is very, very marketable. And it's also going to help you to have a very uh, robust understanding of what's going on. Not just the, the technical hands-on piece. But also like what goes on in the whole landscape. What like how does an organization use IT, and then how do they secure that environment once they have uh, assets in there and you know in their company or whatever? So it's helping you to have a big picture of what's going on. And then when you use when you get out of college or vocational school or university or whatever your community college even whatever, you have not only do you have a degree, a marketable degree in associates or bachelor's or master's or PhD or whatever you have, but you have the knowledge. You have a very mature understanding of how this field works. Right. Um, and, you know, it's not just one thing. And that gives you the ability to get into um, apprenticeships, um, internships, and actually you can get your experience while you're in college. So that's the second best way, I would say, outside of like the military or some kind of um, f government organization that's going to give you hands on and give you everything you need before you get out. I would say the next thing that you could do is, is do a degree. Now, let's say, Jordan, you, you're you not going to do a degree. You didn't do a degree for your own reasons. Maybe you have a kid. Maybe you have you don't have time for that. You have money. It's just a, a person who can get a degree is a very blessed individual because not everybody has those kinds of opportunities. Some people don't have the time, they don't have the money, they don't have the, they just don't want to do it for whatever reason, right? They don't want to go in debt, whatever the reason may be. Okay, if that's the case, you couldn't get the internship through college, you didn't go to the military. Okay, now, now what do you do? Now, let's think about this. There's a few things that you can do. Um, one uh, would be, to look in your local area for a field tech or help desk type job. And it is not going to be easy to get these jobs. And once you get the jobs, they don't pay well. It's not going to be the ideal job. All right. And it makes sense because it's your first position. It's not going to be, you're not going to be a senior exec at a company. You're not going to suddenly make a hundred thousand dollars doing field tech work. Right. But let me just tell you some options here. One of them could be working for one of the wireless, giant wireless companies. In the U.S., the giant wireless companies or the cable companies, they have a job for um, people who lay wire down. They, they're the guys who come to your house and, and hook up your Internet, right? The reason why I'm suggesting this is because it's a real good way to – it's a real good way to put – say you work for – T-Mobile, right? It's a good way for you to put T-Mobile as a as an employer, which is a gigantic telecommunications company. And you saying that they trusted you with all their equipment to go out and hook up the internet at different sites or whatever, that's huge for your resume. So you got Verizon, you got T-Mobile, you got Sprint, you got AT&T, you got those telecom mobile um things that you could do. And I'm not talking about necessarily the salesperson rep who's selling you the the um, the phones, but you could actually use that too because those guys are actually pretty technical. You could actually use that as your first job. Now, another one that you could do is field tech. And this would be for working for like a local um, telecommunications company, like a local internet company, like a Comcast or or uh, um, what's the other one called uh, Cox or something like that? Who are laying? Who are actually setting up your internet, going to your house? Those those guys don't get the props they deserve. But if you get that, if you are in that job right now, or if you if you land one of those jobs, you might think, well, Bruce, they only make twenty dollars an hour, or thirty whatever they make an hour. You know, I'm not. I'm trying to make that big money. Listen, you got to start somewhere, and these guys are perfectly positioned 
to start to expand their resume and start to level up. And the reason why is because they have exposure to a lot of initial networking concepts that you guys don't. Like if you've never done networking before, you'd be surprised. These, these guys who hook up your internet, these guys have exposure that some new people don't. They they know the difference between cat one, uh, cat uh, five and six. They know the difference between they know what coax cable is. They know what IP addresses is are. They know they know basic stuff on connecting a network to the um, to the telecommunications place. So that knowledge right there allows them to take the next step, which would be networking. Network engineering would be the next perfect step for them. And, and that gives them an entryway into doing something like a CCNA or a security plus or and then starting to expand their knowledge on how to set up a server. They're they're only one step away from doing that um, intermediate help desk work that even help the regular help desk people don't get exposure to. So we talked about uh, field techs. We talked about being like a, a wireless um, in, a connector. Uh, a wireless customer service guy, uh, person. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones. You want to look locally. That's what you really want to do. Look locally. And if you, another option for you, and this is not ideal for everyone, but another one would be to be ready to move out of the state or out of the country. Because there's a lot of out of country and out of state jobs that really are looking for people like maybe you live in Iowa or some shit right Boise Idaho something like that and they don't really have a lot of jobs for what you're not if you're Jordan if you're willing to move there's so many more opportunities outside the U.S. there's so many op opportunities outside of your state I know that's not ideal I'm just putting out options for you look not only in your local area look outside you you're gonna have to make some sacrifices when you're first starting out, right? And that might be, I have to move out of state. I'll have to move out of the country. I have to do something to get my feet, to get my hands dirty, to get my hands on some help desk job, right? So that's another thing you can do. Um, some other options for you would be to do freelance work. If you're really, really good at, say, wi setting up Wi-Fi, right? You just happen to have done it in your house a half a dozen times. You have the A-plus certification. You, how to, you just know how to do it, right? What you could do is look locally for people who are looking to set up their local network, set up like a little um, a little business, like a, not necessarily an LLC or something like where you got to do all the paperwork and stuff. But you can just do a self-proprietor business and you, you're a freelancer and you're setting up wireless networks as an example for people in your local neighborhood. And then you can put that on your resume. What I'm trying to do is build out your resume with experience. That's what we're trying to do. That's why I mentioned being a wireless customer service person or uh, a, a, a field tech that's setting up networks um, this, for Cox or for uh, Comcast or something. Um, any kind of field tech work and then also freelance work is another thing you could do if you just happen to be really good at setting up networks or even uh, creating, I don't know, creating a websites or something like you can do freelance work and you want to put that experience on your resume that's what we're trying to that's where we're aiming for another thing you could do is do uh volunteer work if you happen to be super good at fixing computers i'll give you an example like when i first started doing this for whatever reason i was really good at removing viruses i was the go-to guy to remove viruses from people's computers i just knew how to i i knew how to do it um because because the military actually, um, I had a real good solid understanding of how computers work and how viruses infiltrate your system, and and I knew how to remove virus. So my family, my friends, everybody would come to me and say, "Hey man, my computer's acting crazy," and I'm like, "What do you mean?" And they would tell me all the symptoms, and I'd be like, "Oh, you got a virus, bro," and they'd be like, "Man, could you help me? Because I don't know how to." And I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> And I go over the house and fix it. I literally could have put that on my resume. I could have been, I could have said, I'm a freelancer. I do cybersecurity. I'm, I'm a cybersecurity uh, sp specialist. I'm a, because that's literally what I was doing. I was doing cybersecurity work for friends and family and strangers sometimes, removing malware off their computer. I was doing it for free, but I totally could have put that on there. I could have put on my resume, removed five root kits from, uh, 
from local uh, community outlook uh, outreach um, site or something from their server or whatever. I could have worded it in such a way that I'm showing, hey, I've done this before. I've touched, I've been trusted, entrusted with unlocking people's systems. I've been entrusted with um, getting people access to their passwords. I've been in, I've been, uh, I've removed virus. So what we're trying to do here without getting too much in the weeds and say too much more, we're trying to get experience on our resume so that it's a stepping stone to go to the next, the next stage. I hope Jordan, that that makes some sense. Is it going to be easy for you to land a job with just an A plus certification and no technical experience? No, you're going to have to make some sort of sacrifice somewhere. It's not going to be easy. When you get that job, it's not going to pay very well, typically, right? I, off the top of my head, I can't sit here and promise you that like some of these other gurus do. Say, oh, you're going to make $100,000. All you got to do is take the CCNA. No, bro, that's not like they really want you to have experience here. Like you and it, it's people got to put their you got to have some skin in the game. You got to have you got to put the time in to do this. Like it's not going to be it's not sudden. It's not magic. Uh, so it Jordan, keep applying is what I'm telling you. One thing you could do is put your res, you put your profile everywhere. I know you don't have experience, but put you have an A plus. You, you, you have some sort of skills in IT, right? I'm assuming maybe you set up your own lab. Maybe you know how to set up networks. Put that skill set on your profile. When I say profile, you need to be on LinkedIn. You need to be on Dice, on Monster, and you need to be applying for jobs, applying for jobs, looking for your entry level position. And I and I gave you a few things that you could do um, that I hope help you out. It's not easy to start when you have no experience, even with an A plus certification. They're they're really looking mostly looking for experience, but that doesn't mean that you can't get it. You just you're gonna have to make a sacrifice to get your foot in the door. And correct me if I'm wrong. I'm I know I'm speaking to a lot of gurus out there, you know, and I, there's people who have more knowledge than me, who have more experience than myself. If you guys have some suggestions for Jordan, who has no experience, who has an A plus certification, who's trying to put his foot in, get his foot in the door, please add to this. I will add this to the conversation, and we can. We could help Jordan and others who are trying to get in this field to to get that 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 money so they can build out, you know, have a better life. All right. Let me let me go ahead and answer some more questions. OK, Jordan goes on to say, I built an active directory home lab recently and um, I'll add that. I'll add that as my yes, yeah, that's the kind of stuff that you need to do um set up home networks put that in on your resume and your profile as a skill set and and try to get your foot in the door most important thing is to try to get your foot in the door at any organization at this point you might even want to work for free somewhere because you want to put that on your resume if, if there's an organization that will allow you to come in and help them with their network and you're going to set up their network or secure their network even better. Like they have a Wi-Fi network, but it's it's open. It's on it's using WEP for some stupid ass reason. You want to go in there and help them secure it. You could put that you could go ahead and help them out and then secure and help them secure their system and then put that on your resume. Another thing that Ryan last week brought up that I didn't that I've been neglecting to say is that there's a local organization in every country, um, every state. And city for sure has one. Well, most cities, like every state for sure has one. It's called an ISSA. And an ISSA is an org is an information system security association. And they have one in like here, they have one in Denver, they have one in Colorado Springs, they have one in um, I don't know, name it. They have one in Hawaii in Oahu, they have one in uh Des Moines, Iowa, they have one in every major city. And this is a group of cybersecurity and IT professionals that get together and they're sometimes they're advertising different products. Sometimes they're advertising services and companies. Sometimes they're advertising jobs. Sometimes they're they're just teaching like they're freely. Sometimes they'll have like a lunch and anybody who's a member comes in and then they uh, and I don't remember how much the membership is. I think initially you can come in for free. Uh, but there's like a yearly or monthly membership. That's another way to start networking and get your foot in the door. The ISSA. Just go to Google, type in ISSA, and put your city 
and they're guaranteed to have one. And usually they'll meet like every month or something like that. And as far as I know, ISSA is the only organization. I don't know of any broad IT or IT type thing that does this. I don't know if there's a crypto organization that does it. I don't know if there's a uh, an AI organization that does it. But I could tell you, ISSA for information system security uh, people, solid. And if you're a help desk person, if you're a server person, whatever, you're trying to get in in, um, in security, ISSA is a great place to network and interface with people like myself who who just want to spit game. Because in the reason I think that the reason why we have this in cybersecurity is because we don't have enough people doing this. There's not enough people doing it, but there's so much going on in the cyber threat space. There's so much. There's so much shit happening. There's so many sites getting hacked. There's so many organizations leaking information. There's so we don't have enough people to do this work. And so that's why we freely give out information because we don't have enough people to do this shit. And to be honest, I don't care. To be perfectly honest, and I'm not trying to be like, you know, kindler, gentler, uh, in, all inclusive diversity or any shit like that. I don't care what your gender is. I don't care what your race is. I don't care what you believe in. I don't care who you voted for. I just want people to help us to do this work, to be perfectly honest. When I'm in the job and I'm handling hundreds of thousands of systems, I wish I had another person to help me out. And we just don't have enough people, especially younger people. We don't have enough people coming in this field. And because of that, we have all of this extra work that's piled on us. We don't have enough automated systems to help us out, right? I, I'm hoping AI helps us because it's too much work for one person to do. It's too much per work for us. So that's why we have things like the ISSA, because we have to stick together. The cybersecurity field, the cybersecurity community is a very small, it's a small community. Just last week, there was a dude named Ryan jumped on here and he started telling me stuff. I'm like, dude, do I, I'm like, do I know this guy? It turns out we we at some point we worked for the same organization. I mean, we volunteered for the same ISSA. He mentioned it, and I was like, "Oh shit, are you?" And he, he's local. And I'm like, "Damn!" So actually, maybe next week, or I'm not sure. At some point, him and I are going to get together, and I'll have him call in. And then I'll, he's a cybersecurity professional like myself, so maybe I'll like do an interview and ask him questions. Have him chime in on how we could pull more people in, or if like people like Jordan jump in and say, "Look, man, I got no experience." I'm a cyber, I mean, I'm a CompTIA person, but I'm trying to get my foot in the door and we can ask Ryan, we could pick his brain on what he, th where he thinks that Ryan could start, you know, and maybe um, he could chime in and, and, and add something to this conversation. It's a small community because we don't have enough people doing this work. So if you're trying to get in this field, you're in luck because we really, really need people. That said, you have to come in and know your shit. There's a high, there's a, the learning curve is is pretty steep, right? I would say it's not as hard as nursing. I, I've seen a friend of mine had gotten to nursing and I saw her books and I was like, that is way harder than IT. <laughs> it's way harder than anything I've done in IT. Um, it's not that hard, but I would say it's not that easy, right? It's not, it's not, you're going to have to open some books. You're going to have to do a, a higher level of effort to get in here because they're not going to just hire anybody to do this work because they're trusting you with the keys of the castle. They're trusting you with their secret information. They're, cla they're classified. They're sensitive. They're, they're, they're trusting you with very important information. So they can't just hire just anybody. You know what I'm, you know what I mean? Like think about your bank. When you go to the bank, you want to know that they're, your ba the bank is holding is doing what they're supposed to do with their servers, right? You want to know that they have secure apps and stuff. They got to hire people they can trust who know what they're doing. So you have to have the knowledge. Okay, let me see. I got a couple of questions and comments on here. Um, e uh, Ewong, I hope I pronounced that, Oban, says, do you have any courses on risk management framework? Yes, I do. So if you guys are interested in courses on risk management framework, that's really my specialty. I've been doing it for over 20 years. Risk Management Framework, NIST, RMF uh, for 800, 800-37, Rev2, and 800-53. Um, I have a lot of, I've got 
about three courses on this. If you're interested in that, go to combocourses.com and go check them out. I got tons of downloadables, tons of free stuff. Combocourses.net if you want to get all kinds of um, free stuff, uh, free books, free ebooks, audio books, um, entry, introductions to risk management framework to even see if you want to do this. And then I've got the paid stuff. Like if you're serious, you're like, Bruce, I'm not playing around here. I'm investing in myself right now. I just need somebody to come in and show me exactly step by step how to do it. Then you can go to combocourses.com and, and it's there. Um, and there's there's uh, still some discounts out there that you can use to, to get it done. So the answer is yes to that. Now I've got books as well. If you're more of a reader, if you're if you want to listen to audio books, I got a, a really good audio book on it. Um, all kinds of downloadables, all kinds of templates that you can use if you're actually in the middle of this work. The reason why I do this, because I wish somebody would have done this for me when I first started. I had to read. I had to go to the actual laws and read them and then figure out what they wanted. <laughs> now there's so many resources for people. OK, here's another comment. He says, trying to pivot to GRC, currently working as a tier two operations ticket system help desk. Recently became a Security Plus certified person and currently studying the, for the CGRC. How do I navigate into getting a uh, secure clearance? OK, so first of all, a uh, random one, um, you are my primary audience. So whenever I write a book, whenever I am talk, whenever I do any of these videos, the shorts, the longs, the podcasts or anything like that, the audio, you are my primary. You are the main person I'm talking to because you are prepped to do GRC work. You are exactly my demographic um, and you are perfectly positioned to get right into this. So that said, you should know you don't need a clearance to do this type of work. And let me explain that real quick, because a lot of people think to become to do security work, you have to have a clearance. And that's not that's not the case. So the way it works is. Clearance, an official clearance is for top secret and secret sensitive work. Not many people actually do that kind of work. And that's mostly for the federal government or the state government or contractors who work for the federal or state government for whatever country, because secret stuff is not just the U.S., it's also in UK and Canada and and um, Nairobi. It's everywhere. Every country has some kind of top secret information, whatever to work for. So that said, normally you have a background check with a security job, with any kind of cybersecurity job, any security job, period. If you're personnel security, if you're physical security, if you carry a weapon, if you do cyber, any kind. Because the thing is, you are going to be. You're be, going to be given the keys to the castle. That's the special thing about uh, about security in general. If you're if you're doing physical security, they're literally giving you keys sometimes and you carry a weapon. Right. You have a certain level of access that most people don't have. And they're trusting you to do the right thing in those positions. If you're a security guard um, and then if you do cybersecurity, similar but digital. So you're, they're going to give you an admin account, possibly. They're going to you're going to see all their vulnerabilities. You're going to know where all the weak spots are. Um, you're going to have a, an elevated level of privilege in some cases. That said, they usually do a background check. A background check doesn't need, mean that you're going to get a clearance, a security clearance. A security clearance is a secret or top secret or whatever classified access to classified information. The last three jobs I had, I didn't need access to classified information, but they did do a background check on me. Um, that background check is called a public trust. One of the names for them is called a public trust, which is not a class. It's lumped in with the classified, you know, clearances or whatever, but it's not a it's not a security clearance. It's a background check. So public trust is what they do is like a background just to make sure like if you work for a bank, they want to make sure you didn't rob a bank beforehand, <laughs> stuff like that. If you work at a, just like a, if you are a doctor at a hospital, if you've done a malpractice, you had a malpractice suit on you, probably not going to be able to get the job as a doctor at that particular hospital. So it's kind of like they're doing a background check to make sure that they can you can be trusted. You've 
They want to see what you've done before and, and what's what's going on with you. That said, you could have a, some sort of criminal background. It doesn't mean that they're not going to hire you. It just means that they want to make sure they can they want to see what risk level you are, are to them. And then they have to manage their level of risk that they're taking on by taking you. Right. So they do look at your finances. They look, make sure you don't have like a gig crazy amount of financial debt that's like millions and millions of dollars in debt or whatever that's not secured by assets or something like that. Or, you know, that you uh, stuff like that is kind of what they're looking for. That's what the background check. All right. So with that out of the way, you don't have to have a clearance to be a security guy. You are pivoting from being a help desk person, tier two operations to being a GRC person. Okay, so there's a couple things here I'm seeing. Um, it's much, much easier for you if you've, if you've been on help desk or any kind of tier two ticketing. If you know what the landscape of IT looks like, it's going to be way, way easier for you to do CGRC. The main thing that I see with people who are trying to transfer from tier two or tier one uh, help desk or even server operations or a system admin to GRC, the main thing I see is that they don't put the proper things on their resume. There's a couple key things that the employers who are looking for GRC people, uh, they're looking for GRC people. There's a couple key things that they're looking for. Um, one of them is frameworks. So frameworks are like um, NIST 800 risk management framework, uh, PCI DSS, HIPAA, uh, Sarbanes-Oxley, SOC 1 or SOC 2. Um, these are the kinds of things, exposure that they're looking for. These are the main ones that they're looking for. There's other ones like um, ISO 27001. Uh, if you if you are familiar with any of these things or if you have any kind of exposure, and if you don't, you might actually have exposure to it, but you don't know. Because a lot of times help desk people, you guys are just kind of playing whack-a-mole. But what you don't know is that the, you're play, you don't know the rhythm you're playing, but the rhythm you're playing to is a framework. Does that make any sense? <laughs> so it's everything's being dictated by federal and state laws or industry laws. The way that organizations meet those federal state industry laws and regulations is with standards. Hospitals have to use go by HIPAA. That's protection of patient information. Banks have to go through, well, if it's a, if it's a financial institution that's doing like large investments and stuff, and they've got publicly traded um, assets, then they'll do something called Sarbanes-Oxley. And then if you are retail, if you're in a restaurant industry and you're taking card information, Target, Walmart, whatever, they definitely are doing something called PCI DSS. So if you have been playing whack-a-mole as a, as a um, system admin guy, you guess what? You are doing PCI DSS in some way, shape, or form. You just need to know how to put it on your resume. So the real question is how you put it on your resume. And then what, what are you exposed to? Like which ones, what standards do you know? I guarantee you, you're doing one of them. If you don't know, I guess what you could do is figure out, okay, number one, what industry are you in? So as a ticketing person, let's say you work for Walmart. That's that's retail. So that would be PCI DSS. Um, if you work for the government, more than likely it's going to be the NIST 800. If whatever one it is, what you can do to get some more ideas of what of how to word it. You can go download my free resume on LinkedIn. Link, if you happen to be watching me on LinkedIn, if you want to find me on LinkedIn, it's Bruce C I S S P R M F. You'll find my my profiles out there for all to see. Um, but you can also just go to combocourses.com and download or combocourses.net, download my resume and get an idea of how to word it. How to how to word the how do you put that you know or have exposure to those standards um, will be on my resume and you'll have the proper format of the resume that they're looking for. And then you want to put that resume everywhere. Once you tighten up that resume, um, what else, what other questions you said you're currently studying for the CGRC. So CGRC, I have that certification back when it was called cap. <laughs> They've changed the name recently, 
But um, that certification focuses 100% on a standard called NIST 800, uh, NIST 800 Risk Management Framework. And it focuses on a few documents. It focuses on um, NIST 837, NIST uh, 853, NIST uh, 830. It focuses on FIPS 199 and FIPS 200. And then there's a couple of other documents that it has. But that's primarily what it's all about. So if you get that CGRC, that's actually really good. That's a really good direction to go in. It's going to come down to your resume and making sure that you tell them that you let the employers know and the technical recruiters know that you have exposure to the standards because that's really what they want to know. Now, there's some tools that you can put under your tool that you might already have. One of them is any kind of scanning tools, Qualys, Nessus, Tenable, um, ACAS is what some federal organizations call it. Um, what other tools? EMAS, um, JIRA. If you have any exposure to any of these, uh, ServiceNow, uh, what other tools do you use out there in CGRC world? Mm, CSAM is another one. X, um, what's that? Oh, man. Ex Exacta, that's another one. Archer, GRC is another one. Any kind of seam tools are going to help you out. Like um, Splunk, if you know that one. Um, these are all tools that you could put on. If you put on a resume, you're going to be very attractive to a CGRC type uh, person. Skill sets that are often missed. Uh, for uh, regular IT guys, your help desk, your your system admin per guys, that they don't normally put this kind of stuff is writing policies, maintaining and writing policies, doing audits. That's like doing assessments, security control assessments. That's another real good one to put on there. That's going to make you very, very attractive to your G CGRC people. And those are the main things that you want to put on your resume. I hope that that helps you out. Um, you said you have risk management framework and you have Splunk. Yeah, put that on. You got to put that on your resume. Um, any feedback? Recently subscribed to this last month and I need. Yeah. Uh, have was push. It was OK. You have imposter syndrome. <laughs> Listen, man, um, it, it it's a psychological problem that creeps up. I've got 20 years of experience and sometimes it hits me. Um. But I have to remind myself that my the information that's in my head, that's bouncing around in my head, is very, very important. Otherwise, people wouldn't be paying me what they pay me to, to talk about it, to do it for a living. So it's a cycle. A lot, you know, imposter syndrome pops up even on me. And I just got to get real. Like, man, I'm literally making six figures doing this. Like, what? Nobody's talking about this. Typically, your six-figure guys are not doing this. They're not talking about their experience. They're making six figures doing their own thing. You know what I mean? So uh, let me see. Going back to TikTok over here. Somebody said, um, I have a Network Plus, a Security Plus, a Google Cybersecurity Certification, and I can't land a job. Um, do you have experience will be a bigger so certifications will not necessarily get you a job. Um, a certification is supposed to be what the employer uses to validate your experience. That's what it's originally supposed to do. A degree is a little bit different in that it's telling, it does a couple things. It's, it's kind of like a notch in the belt of the company you're working for if you have a bachelor's degree or an associate's or a PhD or whatever. So the company can say, hey, we got 500 bachelor's degree professionals on our team, right? It's kind of a notch in their belt. Another thing it does is it tells the employer that you've been doing, you've been studying the same thing pers persistent, consistently for the last year, two years, three years, four years, right? It tells them that you have invested your time and money and energy into learning and mastering this thing. So it, it, those two things that it does is, and then another thing is it's validating how serious you are about this. Cause you've been doing this. You, you worked 
for two years to get your degree or four years to get this degree, you are very, very focused. So a degree is above a certification for sure. And then uh, experience is king. Experience is king. Um, that said, how much experience do you have? Because that's the kind of stuff you need to put. The experience is what you need to put on your resume. Um, they'll expire. They will hire a dude with two years experience over a dude with a, a net a security plus certification and no experience. But you got to articulate on your resume what kind of experience you have. Uh, otherwise, it's a hard sell. Uh, to take a person who just took a per anybody could pass those certifications and I'm not trying I'm not shitting on the certifications I love certifications and I, I'm often promoting CompTIA in particular because I believe in CompTIA A plus and CompTIA Security Plus I think they're great certifications those are great certifications but anybody can take those tests and pass it and and then pass themselves off as a IT professional. They want you to have experience. The question is, how do you get your foot in the door? And we talked about that at the very beginning of this podcast. And I, I'll add a little bit more to this. And any, any of you gurus out there want to chime in on how you can get yourself, get somebody can get in the door with no experience, please, please help me out here. I mentioned a few ways that you can get it. Let me start with one of the, one of the best ones I've heard from another cybersecurity professional who jumped on here last week, Ryan. He said, "Go to an organization called the ISSA. Go to your local ISSA. Your local ISSA and ISSA stands for Information System Security Association. I believe that's. Let me see if I'm, I don't want to lie to you. <laughs> let me just check." I used to I used to volunteer with these guys and I did some of my initial teaching for free with the ISSA. ISSA is the OK. Um, IT. I'm not talking about the International Sports Science Association, by the way. <laughs> I'm seeing that pop up. I'm talking about the Information Systems Security Association. Um, if you go to your local chapter. So what I want you to do. Um, if you're still watching me, is to type in, go to Google or Bing or whatever, and type in ISSA chapter, and then put your city. I'm doing it right. You know what? Let me show my screen. I want to do it live for people who watching me on Facebook or TikTok. Okay, bear with me if something crazy pops up in my in my previous uh, <laughs> searches. <laughs> uh, I haven't deleted this in a long time, so I apologize for my. Uh, for my vices, ISSA chapter, <laughs> and I'm gonna put Denver. Like, let's say I was in Denver, so I would put ISSA chapter Denver, and here it is. It pops right up. So Denver ISSA membership. So the reason why this is a great place to go to is because you can go, you can just go and visit, and they have these like every every month. It says top ten reasons cybersecurity professionals join the ISSA. Build professional relationships. Um, keep up with developments in information security, risk, and privacy. Content of the chapter meetings. So the content is actually really good sometimes. Um, sometimes they even serve food. Um, professional development and education programs, earning CPEs, um, learning practical and best practice solutions, career information, and employment opportunities. Ding, ding, ding. And there's more, right? But my, my point is, Unlike many other organizations, um, one of the great things about um, information uh, is cybersecurity is that we have organizations like this. And this is just one of them, by the way. There's a couple of other ones that we have. And, and this is really, really great for getting your foot in the door because a lot of times employers will actually show up to these meetings. And sometimes they'll have like job fairs that they're not advertising everywhere or impromptu job fairs that they'll have like in the next week, whatever, that they pull people in. They'll have internships. They'll have on-the-job training type stuff. They're looking for people. 
all the time. Like I said, we're always looking for people to do this work. And we just it's it's hard to find people like yourself who have who who worked your ass off to get the security plus and the network plus and, and want to get into this field. It's just hard to find you. So ISSA is a place that we can all come together and find each other. So that's one way that you can try to get your foot in the door. Another thing would be the job fairs. Um, another thing I'd say is, is look for local field tech help desk type positions. Um, that's how you get your foot in the door. Uh, don't don't try to go for these. I know you're trying. Maybe you're trying to get into security or whatever. You're trying to be, uh, you know, a pen tester or some crazy shit like that. You want to start off small. Start off as a journeyman, as a help desk person, as a field tech, as a customer tech a support person. Start off there and use it as a stepping stone to get your foot in the door of this career field. It's worth your time. It's worth your effort. You you definitely took the right steps. You know, and I'm not trying to discourage you or anybody else who has no experience with this. I, I want you to come in this field because we don't have enough people to do this work, to be honest with you. Um, the last five, six jobs I've done, we we don't have enough people. We, we rarely have enough people to do this work. And I find myself... Uh, treading water just to do all the work that we have to do. So the next step is to get that experience. And there's a few ways you can do it. And those are, those are just a few. And at the beginning of this, I also mentioned doing freelance work. That's another thing that you can do. You want to get something, put something on your resume that's experience related, right? And I'm not knocking any of your certifications. I love certifications. I think they're great. Um, a great alternative to uh, for those who don't have the resources to do university or don't have the, the time or, or don't don't want to put themselves in debt. Um, it is great, but it's, it's not a replacement for degrees and it's definitely not a replacement for experience. So um, let me keep it going here. Let me answer another question. Um, Let me see. BRC said, wait, wait, hold on. I think I missed a couple questions here. David Petrell, how you, how you doing, man? He says, what can what can I do to break into six figures cybersecurity? What can I do to break into six figures cybersecurity? I currently have been doing GRC for two years now and have a security plus. I'm working on both a CISSP and a CEH. Okay, I can answer this one. All right, there's a few ways. All right, let's start off with certifications. Let's start off with certifications. Okay. CISSP is definitely a good way to go. CEH is another one. Both of these certifications have employers throwing money at you. A few other ones would be some other professional level certifications. Professional level certifications are not easy to get, and they typically come with uh, you having to either have a degree under your belt or X amount of experience, years of experience. For most, pro no, I won't say most, but many cert professional level certs will get you that six figures. The marketable ones will give you the six figures. I'm just going to name a few to kind of get you uh, to understand what I'm talking about. CISSP, CEH, CISA, CISM, CRISC. Um, another professional level cert would be CCNA. I would argue that's a professional level cert, but definitely CCNP is a six figure uh, certification. Um, what other six figure certifications do you have? You have them across the board. There's a bunch of cloud ones. The AWS cloud, uh, operator, I think is also a six figure certification. Um, hmm. Oh man, there's there's quite a few six level six figure certifications that you can get. Um, certifications are one way. Uh, no, degrees, okay. Let me name a couple degrees. So first of all, bachelor's, master's is going to get you there faster, but especially if you have a bachelor's or master's in a specific field, they want you to be specialized in a, like a specific area 
what I mean to say is, let me let me explain it better. So if you are in if you are in a technical field like computers, you want a technical degree, like uh, a bachelor's or a master's in cybersecurity, or a bachelor's or master in information systems, information assurance, inf cyber security. Uh, I already said that. <laughs> IT, anything like any kind of computer related, and you're in a computer related field. If you have a bachelor's or a master's in that. I can't speak for scientists, you know, I don't I, I can't speak for biologists if they want you to have a, a, a bachelor's in chemistry or something like that. I can't speak for them. But in IT, if you have a bachelor's or a master's in an IT field, that's a very good way to get your foot in the door. So this is six figure jobs. So and you could probably you could land a an IT job with a STEM any kind of STEM degree. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But your IT jobs, your IT degrees, your cybersecurity, your computer science degrees are going to get you much farther than, say, a degree in, um, I don't know, mathematics or something. And you're, That said, I, I have my last job, we had a mathematician who was making six figures, <laughs> who was working with us making six figures. But that guy knew how to code. So he, he was a cybersecurity guy who knew how to code and how to math. So he was a real smart guy. <laughs> so uh, that guy was making six figures. Um, so we talked about certifications, professional level certs. That can get you six figures. Uh, we talked about degrees. Um, another thing that can get you six figures is location. Some locations just don't lend themselves. They just don't, the companies around there, the cost of living's low and they just don't pay six figures. Off the top of my head, a place like Kansas comes to mind. Um, a place like, I don't know, Arkansas, probably not Tennessee. You don't typically have a lot of high paying. They have them, but it's not as many as say Virginia, Washington, Maryland. Most of those are those IT jobs are six figure jobs. That said, there's so many. Um, the cost of living is really high there. Southern California has a bunch of six level uh, six figure jobs. Uh, Colorado has a bunch of six figure jobs. Uh, Dallas Fort Worth area in Texas, Plano, Texas, has a bunch of six figure jobs for IT uh, doing CR GRC type stuff. Um, those are the kinds of places that will get you the six-figure jobs. Just remember, some places just don't lend themselves to, to making that kind of money. Another thing that can get you six figures is companies. Some companies just don't pay six figures. Some companies, like smaller companies a lot of times, uh, don't pay six figures unless they're a small company that has a big contract with the government or something like that. Those guys can pay. Those guys pay. They, they pay very well, but uh, some smaller companies don't. But some that do pay six figures, easy, Fang. That's uh, Facebook, um, Meta, whatever the hell they're calling these, their self these days. Um, Amazon, Apple, um, Netflix, Google, and Tesla. Those are big tech companies that are publicly traded internationally. And those guys pay six figures easy. Uh, so, but some companies, I'm just saying, some companies just don't pay six figures easy. Um, what other things? How about skill sets? Skill sets that pay good, that pay six figures. Um, Splunk. If you know Splunk really well, that's six figures. You can easily make six figures doing Splunk. Uh High level networking, network engineers, like due to do WAN technologies, doing routing protocols. So routing protocols uh, make six figures because <laughs> not many people know how to do that shit. Um, other jobs that make six figures that I know uh, for sure make six figures. High level cloud engineers make six figures. High level cloud guys make six figures. Um, GRC type stuff, assessors. If you are a security control assessor, that's a six figure type job. 
Um, GRC, governance, risk, and compliance, the risk piece usually makes six figures. The uh, the governance piece is like a management type job. Depends on what company you work for to make six figures. Compliance. By the time a company is talking about compliance, they need a guy who makes six figures. So compliance type jobs usually make six figures. So th that's some of the skill sets, some of the certifications from what I have seen in my experience that makes six figures. It's going to come down to what skills you have, what experience you have and where you what your location is. It's going to come down to one of those three things to, to get the six figures. But you can get there. Anybody, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Listen, I'm a high school dropout. I'm a I'm a vet who has extreme PTSD. If 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 this messed up person right here that you're watching can get six figures, I'm telling you anybody can do it. It probably not even take as many steps as I have and in less time. Because I've seen people do it that are definitely not as smart as you that make six figures it's, it's not six figures is not really that big of a deal to be honest with you like it seems like when you don't make six figures it seems like oh i'm gonna reach it and then when you get there you're like eh. and then you meet people who are making like a million dollars and you're like damn <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, I've met a few people making like a million dollars. I'm like, shit. Like, and those guys are doing business. They're not working for other people. They work for themselves. They get, they have contracts, which is a whole nother podcast that I don't that I'm learning recently. I'm recent. Maybe one day I'll make a podcast about that stuff. But I'm not. I'm not there yet. I'm still working on it. <laughs> okay, let me see here. I got some questions on. Few more questions, guys. It's almost an hour in. I'm gonna jump off this thing here real soon. And my battery, my system's about to die. So I'm actually I gotta I gotta stop right now. Oh wait. Can I let me see? Do I have to stop right now? Wait, hold on. Give me a second. Okay, there we go.